Okay, so this video is going to show you how to undertake marking using Turnitin through Vital. First thing you need to do is actually access the papers themselves. This we do under Course Tools, and at the bottom of this list here we'll find Turnitin UK Assignments. Clicking that takes us to normally a list of the essay titles, the assignments, whatever it is. Uh, once you click the title of your assignment, it'll take you to what's known as the assignment inbox. Once you're in the assignment inbox there are a few things that you need to note. Uh, normally you'd have a long list of all of the students submissions down here. Obviously I've only got one. Um, and normally the author would be anonymized so that you undertake the feedback and marking process anonymously. Other things that are worth knowing are the similarity report. This is the, uh, uh, the percentage that is turned up by the Turner in plagiarism software. Um, 4% is nothing to worry about. This green bar would change to amber and then red when it gets particularly high. Once you've input a grade, then the grade would come up here in this little um, uh, this little box. And this little spot just indicates that the student has not viewed their response. Um, but if they have, you'll see a picture of a, a silhouette of a person, and that'll show you that the student has actually viewed the feedback that you've given them. Uh, so those are the really the only things that you need to know about here. Once we actually access the file, we come up with this interface here. And this is where we actually undertake all of the marking. This is obviously the paper itself. We can zoom in in order to be able to read it a little bit more easily. And at any point on the paper itself, uh, we can just click and insert a comment. Once you've typed that, you just save it, and that's your job done. You can then move that around if you want to, and if at some point you think, oh, I don't want that anymore, then you just press the trash button and it goes away. You can also draw attention to a particular section of text if you want to, um, and highlight, uh, highlight the text, and then click on that highlighted area, and add a comment attached to a highlighted passage. And you can change the colour of that highlight if you want to and save it in a normal manner. So let's um, uh, delete that. The other thing that you can do when you're adding a comment is associate it to a criterion in the rubric that you're using to mark. Now adding the rubric and managing that is a separate thing which I can show you in a separate video. Um, but you'll have all sorts of criteria against which you're marking uh, the essay. So, for instance, uh, we might have uh, a criterion about formatting. In this particular instance, there are uh, quotation marks, so you don't need that in a block quote. So, let's highlight that and add a quote. No quotation marks needed for block quotes. And under Associate Criterion, a drop-down menu will appear that has all of the criteria that are contained in your rubric. I'm going to put this one under presentation, it's a detail of presentation. Let me save that, and there it is. And this just indicates, this little, uh, uh, these squares indicate that it is associated now to a particular criterion. That's the simplest way to do all the marking, is just clicking on the script, inserting a comment, and saving it and moving on. The other really useful thing that you have in this, uh, in this system is quick marks. And these you will find in this area over here. You'll find that there are all sorts of different sets of quick marks. Some of these are ones that I've added myself. I've, I've created specific sets for particular modules. Um, but things like commonly used um, come up as a default and you'll have access to those. Um, so many of these you'll find in your own, uh, your own set when you go into to turn it in. And you can just drag one of those and put it anywhere on the script. And what you'll find is that as you hover over the little blue bubble, there's obviously an explanatory uh, bit of text that tells the student uh, in more detail what it is that you're drawing attention to. So you don't need to type that every single time. And again, you can associate that to a criterion. Uh, this is a writing issue, I think, and we'll just be done with that. Sometimes you'll find that you are typing something particular a lot and you want to save your own new quick mark. Uh, so maybe you uh, 
have a particular bugbear about uh, elisions and perhaps there's uh, nothing in the quick marks already about elisions. So um, avoid elisions, uh, write out the two words. Okay. Now once you've typed that in, you can just save that as a new quick mark, you give it a title, avoid elisions, you define a set in which you want it to uh, occur, commonly used, save, right? And then you see the general title there, the explanatory text, and you can put in as much of that as you want to. You can associate it um, to a criterion again in the rubric. And then when you go into commonly used, you'll find that avoid elisions, the very same one that you just created, is available for you to use again. The other part of marking that you may use, need to use is the rubrics. As I say, that's um, uh, something against which you'll, you'll mark uh, the, the essays and it gives a really clear sense of uh, what criteria you're looking for uh, from the student's perspective. And the way to access the, the rubric for marking purposes is just down in this bottom right hand corner with the same little square, um, square logo that we saw appear on the quick mark earlier. So I'm going to click that and here is the standard BA essay rubric uh, that I've imported um, and what you find is there are a number of criteria in there and each one has a score from 1 to 6. If I just make this box a little bit bigger you can see a bit more clearly that 1 is a fail, 2 a narrow fail, 3 third and so on, 2 1 and first. And each one of those boxes comes then with a descriptive passage here um, and some guidance as to what the student might try uh, next time to improve their mark. And that applies to all of those different criteria. Um, and right at the bottom you'll find that the, um, there is a description as to what that particular criterion is looking for. Uh, so this is the last three paragraphs in this particular instance. right? So, if you want to, um, then once you've imported your rubric, you can uh, click uh, through these and you can say, okay, well, you've got uh, sort of 2 2 level comprehension, uh, third engagement, fail in the literature, very well organised, and so on. And then the student, when they view the feedback, they will actually be able to see these descriptive passages and the, uh, the very generic feedback that is appropriate for the box that you've highlighted. You might also have noticed this little number here and this indicates that there are two marks on the script itself that have been associated to the criterion of writing. So remember when we did this one here and we associated it there, that says writing and what that means is that here we can access them again. So we click that to view those two marks, shows us what they are Okay, where is that on the paper? I'm going to go and view that, and there it is, it's highlighted uh, from a student perspective as well. Uh, so associating the marks with the criteria is a really good way of getting them to see the bigger picture of the feedback that you're giving them. One of the major things that you might want to do with feedback is give a paragraph or two of very specific guidance to the student about how they've achieved in this particular assignment and so on. Um, how do we do that? Again, down at this bottom passage, uh, bottom section here, uh, we can view or edit a general comment for the entire paper. Clicking on that, uh, we can type in general comments here um, and save those. Um, again, you can trash those if you want to, or just click in there to edit further. Save that. Um, you'll also notice that you can uh, record a voice comment. So if you wanted to do verbal feedback, you can just plug in a microphone, press record, and you have up to three minutes that you can use. Finally, when you're actually done with the whole marking process, you'll want to type in a mark. You just click there, type it in, press return, and you're done. Uh, so I'm going to close that and return to the inbox. That really is all you need to do. There is a post date. That's the date at which uh, the anonymity gets lifted, and that's also the date when the students can access their feedback. Once you've typed it in and, uh, and saved everything in there, you don't need to do anything else. That post date will come, and the um, 
feedback will be visible automatically to students.